Then on the second, he gets tilted and misses it. From then on, the probability that he makes the next shot is equal to the proportion of how many shots he's already taken and how many shots he scored. What's the chance that in 100 shots, he scores exactly 50. All right, so let's figure out how to solve this problem right here. So first, let's start with the probability P3 of this guy scoring his third shot. So, how many scores has he had so far? Well, he scored his first one, but he misses his second one. So, he's had two throws, and he scored exactly one of them. So, probability three is exactly one half. Now, let's think about probability four. So, probability four is, well, we already know he'll have made at least one shot, that shot that he scored the first time, but then, there's a probability three chance that he makes another shot, that he makes the third shot, divided by the three shots that he'll have taken in total. Probability five is equal to one plus, there's the added probability that he scores another shot, so we have to add one to the numerator, P4, and then we have to add P3 to the numerator as well. So there's now a P3 chance we have to add one to the numerator and the P4 chance we have to add one to the numerator, which means if he scores both, then we'll have to add two. So this is divided by four, which is the amount of shots you have taken right before that. So you can see the pattern, Pn is equal to one plus Pn minus one plus Pn minus two plus dot 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 plus P3 divided by N minus one. So now, let's think about it. Let's try to prove this by induction. So firstly, let's see if we can just find the formula for all Pn. P4 is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 divided by 3, which is 1.5 over 3, which is clearly 1 half again. So P3 is a half, P4 is a half. Let's see if we can prove that Pn is a half. So, you can use the board behind. Oh, crap. I didn't see that there was a board behind. So, uh, let's figure this out. So, we know that P4 is equal to 1 half. That's our base case. Now, let's assume Pn is equal to... 1 plus Pn minus 1 plus dot 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 plus P3 over N minus 1, the formal definition, and let's assume that's equal to a half. Then we'd have to show Pn plus 1 is equal to, well, we already know this by definition. We have to show that this is equal to 1 half. So how do we do that? Well, we already know from our assumption that 1 plus p n minus 1 plus all the way to p3 is equal to 1 half times n minus 1. So plugging that into here, we know that p n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus p n plus p n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus p3 divided by n. So that's equal to 1. That's equal to Pn plus, well, what's the rest of this? That's equal to that right there. Pn plus 1 half n minus 1 divided by n. And, of course, we've already assumed Pn is 1 half. So we have 1 half plus 1 half n minus 1 half divided by n. So we cancel these out, and indeed we get that Pn plus 1 is a half. 
So we've proved that Pn is equal to 1 half for all n. So now we have to figure out, it's kind of like flipping a coin 50 times and seeing, if, uh, it's like flipping a coin 100 times and seeing if we get hedge 50 times or tails, that's equivalent. But here's the caveat. Because he's already determined two of the results of his free throws. So that means we're only flipping that coin 98 times. And since he's already made one free throw, we're only looking for 49 more. So there's like, uh, so for all of these events to happen, there's a 1 in 2 to the 49 chance for him to hit all of the 49 shots. One minus one half to miss the rest of the 49 shots. And then multiply by the amount of ways he can erase those scores, which is just 98 choose 49. So that's equal to 98 factorial over 49 factorial squared times one half to the 98. And this is approximately, oh crap, and also, no, never mind. So this is equal to approximately 16%. So that means it's probably Sachs' lucky day. That's it, and thank you everybody for watching.